there are multiple pressures to the marine environment. Um, and increasingly, the threats have been shifting quite a bit. So in the beginning of the 1900s, a lot of pollution was the main, uh, was the main component of the threats to the marine environment. From 1950s on, a lot of fishing pressure took place um, and destruction of marine habitats, overexploitation of the marine environment and the marine resources. Um, and increasingly, since the 1990s, um, climate change and ocean acidification effects are also um, increasing the pressures to the marine environment. So one of the main challenges of nowadays is to deal with the cumulative impacts, the cumulative pressures on the marine environment. But pollution continues to be a, a big pressure um, and also plastics, uh, which is part of the the, 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 those pressures and more and more we the more we find about marine plastics and microplastics uh, impacts on the marine environment and the biodiversity it becomes even more um, uh, the situation becomes even more challenging with all of those different types of pressures so the global framework for uh, combating uh, pollution at sea is very diverse very fragmented um, it includes a number of um, international maritime organization instruments that were negotiated in the 60s and the 70s, um, as, such as the Marpol Convention, the London Convention and Protocols on Dumping, and a number of other uh, instruments that IMO continues to develop. Um, but in addition to this, in 1982, UNCLOS uh, was adopted, the United Nations Convention for the Law of the Sea, and it comprises um, um, a constitution for the ocean. So it regulates all activities at sea. So all of those other instruments are supposed to make up um, this, uh, this governance regime together with UNCLOS. Um, UNCLOS contains a very detailed uh, and comprehensive definition of pollution, um, which includes uh, energy and substances that in, are, in, are uh, in, introduced to the oceans. And, and that uh, is a successful initiative because in that way, new pressures that we're finding out more and more nowadays, such as anthropogenic underwater noise, can be included in that definition as well, as well as uh, greenhouse gases, for example. Um, but a big problem that we have nowadays is, uh, and even in the 80s when UNCLOS was negotiated, is land-based sources of pollution. 80% of the pollution at sea comes from land, uh, and the, the Global Program of Action um, is the only program that looks into that uh, component of land-based sources of pollution. And it doesn't provide for a comprehensive uh, um, legally binding regime, but UNCLOS provides for a, a legally binding regime under its Article 207. Um, so it works synergistically with all those other conventions, but it's a little bit complicated to navigate this framework because it's so fragmented and so vast.